People deluded, I'm back again. Appreciative to all of you lot tuned in. I hope you're well and safe. First things first, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and in some cases, good night. I hope you and your loved ones are in good health, and I hope you have continued good health if you have that. And if you don't, I hope it gets better. Um, where your personal and private goals, hopes, dreams, ambitions, and aspirations, you know, I'm wishing you the best of luck. With it being Thursday, I hope you're all having a great week and a great start to 2023. Let's maintain that energy. On the topic of energy, please make sure you're commenting when the video premieres. Also, make sure you're commenting after. Make sure you're hitting the like button. You know, these things boost the algorithm and keep growing our platform, people. Also, make sure you're subscribed and you got your notifications on. Check out my playlist and my other content. Now, as you know, Miguel Aziz has been recalled from his loan in Spain and sent to Wigan um, to link up with Kevin Betsy, who he's worked with, and former Invincible and Gunner also, and Colo Torre. Brooke Norton Coffey has had a decent loan spell at Rotherham. He's left and actually jumped up the table and gone to Coventry. Now, and I actually think, so. and Odegaard spoken about our title challenges, so I thought I'd make a video about that let's start with the young players people now first things first where Miguel Aziz is concerned and Brooke Norton Coffey one of my pet peeves about football right especially someone like Miguel Aziz playing in the under 18s when he's a schoolboy or Brooke Norton Coffey where people who are not watching games say he's this that and the other which I'm not just I'm not saying these guys aren't good but these guys that look at these little Twitter clips will be the first to criticise them when they make the step up and ultimately they struggle they you know happy birthday to Brooke in fact he's 19 today uh Aziz is 20. Now, in the grand scheme of football, he is young. Now, we all know where it comes to the top six and competing against other young players to get into the team. Obviously, a congested area or an area of centre mid for Arsenal where we're always looking for such. You know, for Miguel Aziz right now, he's probably behind young Charlie Patton, who's also in the championship at Blackpool. Obviously, at the first team, you've got Lokonga, who isn't playing. A, a level or two above them currently. Granite, Xhaka, Partey are there. El Nene is there. You've obviously, or better yet, for fans and Arteta, there's the luxury of Zinchenko, Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, Smith Rowe, maybe even missing one out that can all play central midfield among other areas. And for young players, the first thing is competency. You know, it's, you know, competency. Whatever your role is, can you do it? Then it's consistency. Can you do it multiple times? You know, three games in 10 days, two games a week. And evident, evid, evidently for a young player like Miguel or Brook or anyone, that's the first sort of thing. You know, if you learn how to swim and you just, you're just swimming in the water that you can stand up in and you don't go into strong courage, you're not really a talented swimmer. So in a nice way, I like to see that these guys are out there of comfort zone. As I always say, there's never su there's no such thing as a bad loan. Of course, you want all of our young players to head out on loan if they're strikers, score a million goals, do a million things. But you learn, you know, you learn, you know, there's several psychological things for, you know, under 21s, under 23s, you reserve football. For the Miguels, for the Brooks, they're faster than everyone, they're stronger than everyone, they're smarter, they're faster in speed of thought. Mistakes go unpunished. You know, if you hold on to the ball too long in midfield, you're not necessarily punished for that on the 21s level. You do that at League One, the championship, the Segunda Division, or anywhere, you might lose the ball. The other team go down the other end, and your team and your team can see that obviously your team could be fighting relegation, could be pressure on the manager, could be trying to fight for promotion, whatever. These are the realities of football. And also sometimes, like for example, you might have to learn different tactics. You might have come through Arsenal playing 4 3 3. The, you know, you're a number 10. The other team that you're going to plays 4 4 2, and you might have to play off the left hand side, rightly or wrongly. There's new tactics. There's obviously people want, you know, it's real. People want to take your job from you in that level. You know, you might be doing everything right and not playing because the manager wants to play other people. There's a lot of psychological things that go into football. And for a 20 year old, you're at the right stage. Now, where it comes to making it at Arsenal and things like that, we'll have to see. Um, for me, I badly want. Miguel to have a great standout loan spell at Wigan because, you know, he's done, you, like I said, you, there's things you would have learned at Portsmouth and things you would have learned in IB for on and off the field that would have made you a better player, better than staying in the under 21s, in my opinion, or, you know, not that training and travelling with Arsenal isn't a good thing, but there's no substitute for playing minutes or kind of currency. So, He's learned a lot, really. Look at Balogun. He learned a lot at Middlesbrough and he's doing well. Eddie and Ketty, I'm sure there's things he learned at Leeds that he's applied psychologically or on the football field and things like that. This is the reality of football. And I'm not saying for Miguel or Brooke or anyone, but when you're the guy at these levels, you know, you're, you're special. You're not outside your comfort zone. So you're ultimately not learning people. So... Yeah, for Miguel Aziz, he's gone to Wigan on loan people. And just by looking at the league table, they're, they're bottom. They've lost their four, last in their last five games, four L's and a draw. Things are real. 
You know, if you're a Wigan fan, you're hearing Arsenal centre midfielder, you want to see the Arsenal centre midfield stuff. So you need to show competency, consistency and ultimately confidence in good or bad moments. This is the reality of football in a nice way. Nobody cares, you know, nobody cares at Wigan that you're, you know, that you're Miguel Aziz. We hear Arsenal centre mid, come and help us. And that, that's that harsh reality of football that I love to see. But I would really like him to have a standout load. You know, I'd like him to play games, which hasn't always been the case at Portsmouth and things. You hope he stays fit by a, um, in, with no injuries and does well, people, because you you can never rule out making it Arsenal, but it looks it, it looks in the balance, if I'm honest. For Brook, things might fall into place. The only thing I think will let Brook down is, you know, what Mikel Arteta demands of the inverted fullbacks and things. I don't think the final third is necessarily a strong point of his. I, I kind of liken him a bit to Wan-Bissaka, but there's a lot to like. And at 19, are you really going to change technically? But he's a quick learner. He's a willing learner. He's a good player. There's someone there, both of them, that can either progress to the first team or make us money. And obviously, we're, with Cedric leaving and obviously Benjamin White and Tommy Asu ahead of him right now, it's in the balance. But again, the academy needs to produce players for our first team, as we've been doing, and players that can't make it here. You know, reality is there might be a time where Nelson, if he signs a new deal, and Ketio, regardless of how good he's doing, Brook, they, uh, you know, Balogun, they might not necessarily make it here, but they're set up to have good careers and Arsenal make top, top whack on them, really and truly. So there's a lot that goes into being a footballer. You know, they're both going to be heading to the championship. For Brook, he joins Coventry, who are 14th, and they've got a number of young players. I think they've got uh, that left back that's just signed from City on loan. Same with Brook. So they've got, to, you know, it's quite an exciting thing. Callum Doyle's there. Coventry have a couple of young players on their books on loan. So it could be a good thing for him. No clue as to why he's been recalled from Rotherham because it seemed like it was going well there. But he has in it. And, you know, in a nice way for Brook, he's going to have to prove it all again now because there's a new manager. And on that topic, you know, Colo Torre's taking over. It's been quite turbulent where Wigan are concerned. This is the harsh reality of life as a footballer. You might have one to three managers in a season. That the first manager might think you're the best thing since sliced bread. So whether you're playing good or bad, you're playing. The next manager, you might be the best in the team, but the next manager is not playing you rightly or wrongly. And you need to be able to deal with that. And I don't think under 21s football in general prepares people for that. There's no such thing as a bad loan. Forget making it Arsenal. All of these things are going to prepare these players for good futures, really and truly. And just by looking at Brooks Data, you know, he's played 21 times for Rotherham, you know, 17 times for Lincoln, 20 times in the Championship, 37 when you add in the, the 17 in League One. There's a platform to build upon there, really and truly. And for Miguel Ezequiel, He's obviously only played 11 times for Ibiza, um, 10 times for Portsmouth. So that's 21 senior appearances. He hasn't got 100 games to his books, to his name better yet at 20 years of age. He's obviously a baby in that regards, people. You know, he's played 16 times in the Segunda Division and uh, 10 times in the Segunda Division and in League One, six times. So that's 16 appearances. You're not going to be the finished article. A level of consistency is not going to be there. Not everyone is going to do what Saka did and Rooney and Cesc and these sort of, not Pedri, these anomaly young players, Musiala, Bellingham, these sort of anomaly young players. They're exceptions rather than the rule because not everybody is doing such people. This is why I urge patience. And in this day and age where you do well at 15, 16, you're seen as the guy, people don't talk about the bumps and bruises as being a footballer, then they look at you like you're damaged goods, really and truly, which is quite disgraceful, really. But if I share my screen with you lot, Miguel Aziz joins Wigan Athletic on loan, people. He's been recalled from UDIB for and has joined Wigan Athletic on loan for the remainder of the season. He links up with Colo Torre and Kevin Betsy in the championship, trying to build upon, as said here, the 11 appearances the 20-year-old made in Spain. Uh, so big him up, people, really and truly. We wish him all the best. As I said, Brook Norton Coffee has joined Cro Coventry on loan, people. He's already played 20 times in the Championship and has two assists. So uh, we wish both of them all the best, as stated there, really and truly, people. And this was just me looking at it from an analytical point of view. Again, Arsenal have really high hopes. That's why he signed a new deal, Brook, last season. Uh, Odegaard has said, we're enjoying the, the, the title race pressure. Let's see exactly what our captain and the fly, the fly region, the class region, the Norway international has said the best Norwegian international in the Premier League, same way El Nene is the best Egyptian in the league. Are you mean to be honest? We enjoy the pressure, pressure is a privilege in life, pressure is a privilege, you know. And I'm not saying footballers are not isolated, but it's a privilege at the end of the day. You're playing football, you're not a single mother or a low income household, you're not someone that's lost their job with kids to feed, you're not some of these things. We've all got pressures, people are living real life, and I'm not saying football isn't pressure, but the flip side of that is you're a footballer. You're kicking a ball around. This is a privilege. Do you know how much people will kill to be in your spot? If you lose a game, in reality, as much as it means the world to me, so what? You don't win something. You don't have. A, you don't achieve whatever you want to achieve. So what? Enjoy the pressure. It's a privilege. It should come with playing for this football club. It's a. It's a given, really and truly, really. 
We feel that people believe in us. To feel that people take us seriously is a good thing. We are where we want to be and we want to fight to win things. We want to be at the top. It's where this club should be. Big up Odegaard for that. We're in a good position at the moment, but we have to stay calm. We have to stay humble. We have to keep working hard. There are still so many things we can improve. That's one of the best things, you know, we can always get better. That's a lovely mindset. And obviously the captain, you know, it's the captain saying this, but that's behalf of everyone connected to the club. Same way when we're in poor form or have been doing rubbish as a club, that's a byproduct of us not doing things. We've done great, great things so far this season. Hopefully it continues. This is one of the most important things for our success, what the fans are doing, the way we are connected together, the connection that we have is so special. I remember in the West Ham game when we conceded the first goal, the whole stadium just cheered for us and helped us to get back into the game. This helps us, and you could expect, say West Ham, Fulham and Aston Villa, and along with Leeds away, those are vital, you know, Brighton to a degree as well. These victories or not losing is as vital as beating Liverpool, beating Spurs, beating Chelsea and anything else we go on to do. Um, this helped us so much and the fans are such a big part of what we are doing now. I'm just grateful for all the support and the love we get. I just want to say thank you. So yeah, big up him. But that's all I really wanted to speak about. I just wanted to offer some opinions on Miguel Aziz and Brooke Norton Coffee. And I was going to read that article where Odegaard um, said anyway. So I thought, why not read it with you lot? You let me know your opinions. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're commenting. Make sure you've checked out my other videos and my YouTube playlists and things. Turn on your notifications. Most importantly, you lot, stay blessed, stay safe, stay in good health. And I'll see you you all again soon. God bless you all. <laughs>